There's so many different ways to cook lob. This version is actually the tartar version, so it's kind of a combination of the northern Thai version of lob and kind of a Bangkok style with the spices as well. It's kind of my grandmother's secret recipe. Uh, I guess it's less of a secret now, but that's cool. Hi, I'm Nick Bognar. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. I have a restaurant called Indo and a restaurant called Sado. Lob is a dish done in so many different styles, but most of the time, right, it's gonna be kind of a mincemeat or a ground meat that's mixed with like a lot of different spices and flavorings and seasonings, typically fish sauce and lime juice. This one, we definitely lean into the richness side and just trying to get this kind of nice, spicy, deep, rich tartar. And we don't really cut it with any acid or anything, which is a, kind of a unique style within itself too, so. The first thing we're gonna do is toast all the spices for the spice paste. And I'm gonna make like a little parcel out of foil, the bay leaves. These are just black peppercorns. A little bit of ground cinnamon, coriander seed. These are the caraway seeds. Some dried Thai chili peppers. Star anise, you know, it's got that kind of like licorice kind of flavor going on. These are two whole seeds of nutmeg. And then kind of the weirder one is the uh, Indian long pepper or dili. And it's it's got a very unique flavor, like kind of like a peppercorn, but almost like an interesting like umami, like an underlining kind of flavor. A couple cloves, cardamom. Some sliced galanga, which is like kind of like ginger root. A lot of people compare it to ginger, but it's really just got this kind of like underlining, kind of aromatic, almost like perfumey kind of flavor. Hey, yes. Oh no, it definitely fell. So I kind of make like a little tent, but not too crazy. And I just bring everything into like a pile, which helps it all just kind of like roast slowly together. We are gonna roast this at 300 degrees until we get all those aromatics going. When we pull those spices out of the oven, most important is just to pay attention to kind of the aromas and the color a little bit. So we want a nice dark golden brown, but not burnt. And kind of feeling like I smell like each of the spices individually, and they all have their kind of characteristics really coming out. So this only toasted for maybe a couple hours, even a little less even, that's fine too. And now it should be ready to go. So now I'm just gonna grind it up in our spice grinder. And then we're just gonna kind of get this into a nice smooth powder. Should almost look like coffee grounds or something by the time it's ready. So I have this sauce pot here. I'm gonna turn it up to medium to kind of get the spices going. First goes in the oil. All right, I'm gonna dump the spices into the oil. Just kind of mix it up a little bit. And we're gonna let that rock until we start to get a little bit of that aroma. And if you have any little chunks, don't worry about it. We're only gonna need a little bit of this paste to actually make the dish. I typically save some of this stuff in my fridge. Actually, one of my favorite things to do is take like sliced steak and make like little like rice lettuce wraps and stuff and then just like a little dot of this on top. There's a package of this that my grandmother made before she passed away and it's just like, I'm never gonna use it. I don't know, I'm just like, it sits in my freezer <laughs> and it's like the most precious thing I have that I own, priceless lob spice. I did try a little bit the other day, it was good. Still good. You'll see this start to kind of like bubble up a little bit. You know, that's all good. We want that kind of like caramelization to start. I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit, more like a medium low. And then I'm gonna kind of just chop up this palm sugar. So palm sugar is just like an unrefined sugar. This flavor profile of it is very like specific to Thai food. I feel like we use it a lot. And with that amount of spice, we're gonna use quite a bit of palm sugar actually. So this is two cups of fish sauce. You're already immediately gonna get kind of this like funky smell. And the idea is that like, there's so much dried spice and spiciness and sugar, and then that balances with the strength of the fish sauce as well. So kind of all three things become this one amalgamated, like strong flavor. So yeah, at this point, I like to just kind of get some of the spices off the bottom of the pot and just kind of do a little bit of that. But all these chunks of palm sugar are gonna kind of evaporate slowly as you cook this down. So now that this is bubbling off, I'm gonna turn the heat way down to basically as low as I can keep it and let it just kind of cook down until we get this into a thick paste. And it is gonna take a little while. So, you know, usually I'll just work on the other components while that's going on. I like to kind of prepare basically all the garnishes for actually mixing up the tartar. These are pine nuts, which for me just go really well with lamb. Pine nuts are definitely not a Thai ingredient. So I got this pan kind of going at a medium and I'm gonna add the pine nuts to that. Pine nuts and lamb are perfect together, you know? And so you kind of get this awesome like Mediterranean, just a note of that and you know, if it tastes good, why not? A little medium low action on these pine nuts and they're already getting pretty toasted. We just wanna see kind of like a uniform golden brown form. It doesn't take much. All right, so we're gonna chop a few shallots for the actual mixture of the tartar. Just a little nice, like, small dice on that should be good. 
And I'm just gonna put that in the bowl I'm gonna mix this up in. And then I'm gonna pick some herbs real quick. So we have Thai basil, of course. And I'm just gonna rough pick some of these. And it's nice if you have a couple of leaves that are small and not super ripped up. You can make it look pretty. And then some mint, which for me with the lamb is huge. And then one of the things that you actually see a lot in Thailand is dill. And you don't see, you know, it's not too much in like the States in Thai food, but my grandmother used dill a lot more than I think a lot of people would expect. And so I just kind of go like one, one to one and get a nice little herb salad going here. And I'm gonna just reserve that for when we start plating it up. Kind of more difficult thing to do is we're gonna kind of cut up this piece of lamb here. So this is a piece of lamb loin, which is kind of like one of the leaner and yet also very clean pieces of the lamb. And this one's been kind of rolled up a little bit. So I'll just take it out like this. And an easy way is to just kind of get flat with your knife. And we're just gonna try to get the, the non-sinewy pieces of lamb loin here. I know in Thailand they do use pork for tartar. That's a little bit of a different vibe, but definitely for the cooked version. I see, I think commonly you see uh, chicken used for like the cooked version of lob, and that's probably the more simple version. So now that I have this kind of trimmed up piece of lamb without any of this sinew, I'm gonna try to make a really nice like kind of chopped up tartar with it. So one of the easiest ways is to just start getting these kind of like thin slices. And I kind of do this like the sushi chef way, which is weird, but. And the thinner you get it, the easier it will be to chop. And I love using lamb loin for tartare in general, because once you get it kind of chopped down and cleaned up like this, it has such a rich flavor that I, I think is just like awesome. And, and if you do it well, especially with something so intense as like this spice paste, any kind of like gaminess that you might be afraid of is just kind of hidden in the best way. And you get this like really intense, very umami kind of flavor from every, every kind of bite you get. So then now at this point, everything's kind of chopped into small little cubes. And then I just kind of start running my knife through this. It does help if your knife is nice and sharp. So once I've kind of done it over a few times this way, I'm gonna kind of flip this whole almost like patty that I've made and just run through again. If I'm at home, I'm taking like a break to like drink some wine or something at this point. Chop, chopping away. That looks pretty good. It should look like some nice, fine, almost more fine than what you would get like a ground lamb or something like that. And I think it's important that you chop your own lamb for this or at least understand like, make sure your butcher is quality, make sure the lamb loin is quality and it's fresh and make sure that, you know, you're not letting it sit out too long or anything like that, keep it nice and cold. And it's just gonna be a better flavor if it's not already pre-ground. So what I'll do now is take the lamb and just kind of add it to this bowl. So now we're gonna go back to this paste and check it out. And what we got now is this super sticky, cooked out spice paste. A lot of the oil will have kind of risen to the top and that's okay, we just wanna kind of incorporate it back as it sits there a little bit. And you can just tell that this is super thick and it's just gonna be really, really deep. Yeah. I think a big part of this dish at this point, since it is a tartare, is to just make sure my seasoning is really nice. So one of the tricks that I like to do is I'll just kind of spread it out into like one nice, like even layer. And it's just a seasoning trick really, because at that point then I can take my salt, almost like I'm seasoning a steak, just like edge to edge on that protein. And then what I'll do is kind of just to get this nice and smooth, I'm gonna take some olive oil, I don't need a ton, and then I'm gonna get some of that lob spice going. And there's so many little variables that could be happening with the way you've cooked this, or the just even just the chilies that you were able to get. So we wanna start to really get into our, our tasting at this point too. So I'm taking this olive oil, and I'm just gonna kinda make sure that I smooth out the, the cooked out lob spice. I'm gonna add a little bit more so it can get mixed in there. And then I'm just gonna start folding in the tartar with the shallots and the lob spice. And a little bit of this oil is good too. And you'll see some of the, all the chili peppers and the spice start to change the color of the lamb a little bit. We want to get it, it's gonna look nice and like kind of red, which I think almost makes it really nice and pretty too. That's actually good, but I actually like it a little more spicy. So I'm gonna put a little bit more in there too. Grandma liked it spicy, way spicier than I could handle. So now that this is all kind of mixed up, and we have enough fat. I'm just gonna put another drop of olive oil in here. Now we're gonna kinda add some of these textural things. And, and the little diced shallot helps with the texture as well. And then, so I'm gonna take some of those toasted pine nuts and a little bit of these crispy shallots that I always have around. And these just come like in a package. And then at this point, I'm not gonna kind of mix it super harshly. I'm just gonna kinda fold those in. And that's pretty much the tartare portion, like ready to go. The pine nuts and the shallots 
even out the spiciness a little bit. So what we do is we call it the meat quenelle. It's kind of a fancy like little football shapes to make it look nice on the plate. And then I'm gonna do a little bit more of these pine nuts. And I really like the crunchy shallots with this. And then I'm gonna go back to these herbs. And what I'll do first is I'll do some ripped up guys. And then that can hopefully get kind of incorporated into it. I left my tweezers back in St. Louis. Just kidding, I only use chopsticks. We mainly ate this with like raw vegetables, which is great. But for the restaurant, we love to use kind of like these rice crackers. And there we go. The little rice cracker, it's almost like tartar and like bread or like some kind of vessel. It definitely makes it a little bit more mild, which is nice, but just try to get a little bit of everything. Yo, it turned out good. I like this. I think if my grandma tried my version of her lob, I think she would tell me that she liked it, but then probably the next day, like make her own for herself, which is cool. I wouldn't, you know, I'd be really stoked if I could have that again, you know? For the recipe, click the link below. If you're ever in St. Louis, please come and see me. Indo, Sato, if you see me at the sushi bar, please say hi.